So I want to talk about toxic bosses. I think we've all had people we've worked for that are absolute dipshits. Um, I've had a few. I've had a few. Um, one that wanted to fight me. Uh, <laughs> I worked for like, a hardware company, a really na a national one, a big one. Um, and I was getting appraised. Um, so I was, there was two teams that wanted me. There was the, oh, what was the one called? I, I worked for the showroom and flooring. So this is in, this is in B and Q. It's a B and Q store. It was a new store and the trade, the trade side wanted me as well. Apparently I didn't know about that, but anyway, I was hired to do flooring and showrooms, which was the most prestigious in the store. And I got to pick my times. Effectively, it was supposed to be split between two of us. One guy was unreliable, stopped turning up. So I was giving his shifts in the end because he just left. So I was given a full-time full -time position in the end. So it was just me managing two departments that were incredibly valuable to the company. But I kept doing everything and I got it all done. I was supposed to, it was supposed to be a night shift, but because of the fact that we all started at the beginning when this job didn't, you know, it was a new build. So we got to work during the day and I got used to people. So I wanted to work with the day staff after I left, after we went to the late shift. Um, and my manager um, allowed me to pick my shifts. So I changed my shift pattern and it pissed the, the supervisors off on the night shift. And the night shift supervisors had no power over me because I worked for the manager on a day shift. They weren't my supervisors. Um, and their staff kept coming to talk to me. I'm just minding my own business, but if they come over, I'm not a rude person. I'm chatting as well, you know, but I don't go out my way to talk to people. They would come into my department and that's what I said to them. Um, and then one of the times he just got so fed up, I had like, it was like good cop, bad cop. One, one's trying to be a good guy. The other one's going mental. And I'm just looking, I go, you're unhinged. <laughs> but it's quite funny because another time I'm like walking around, I could hear him on the tannoy calling my name and I'm just shouting, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> that was fun times. Um, but I had literally, I come in one more, one morning. Um, I know, I, I, no, I stayed behind because obviously I'm on the late, I'm on the late, but I'm finishing a bit later than the other shift, but I'm in with the early. So when the when other shift have their team brief, I was still there for that. And apparently a company director walked around and said, mine was the best presented of all of the, um, and the whole country out of all their stores. So I thought that's, that made me, that made me smile for a moment, but I didn't really, it didn't bother them that much. But it's just sort of funny, I've got these lunatics and yet I'm doing my job well. So what does that say? Likewise, this job I left in when I wrote Who Are You Mind to Free Your Soul? Um, back in 2022, I think. 2022, I think. Um, yeah, I left the job because this lunatic kept, he was just pissing me off. He was trying to make me, he was trying to keep me quiet, trying to keep me suppressed, keep me in a corner out of the way, doing this hardest job in the, in the building. Um, and I weren't having any of that. So I ended up walking off. But what I did say to him, because what it is, when I first went, I've worked there a few times. I started on a different department, but I found it too tedious. It was boring for me. It wasn't stimulating. And some people just enjoy it. I didn't. I wanted to do something a bit more physical. The team leaders there didn't want to lose me. They really they really appreciated everything I was doing. Um, but I went round them. So I went to the other department and said, look, I, I'd like to move, but they won't let me. Um, and they helped me move over. But Ryan always said that if you ever want to come back, we, you, you've always, you know, we'll always, we'd always have you back. Um, and what happened was later on, my my team leader um, got moved to a different department because she was off with COVID. When she come back, she got shifted. But yeah, I got on wonderfully with her. And this other guy who got promoted all of a sudden, he was trying to like, that's what it was. He was trying to like change everything around to try and seem like he's, he's in charge. But he was trying to change something that was working absolutely beautifully with the team. My team worked great together. Um, we knew everything we was doing. It always got finished. There was never a problem at the end of a shift of nothing of something not being. We always did everything, and I often went over to the other department and helped them out during the day, and that's what he took exception for. There's nothing to do sometimes for an hour or so in the shift. The other side are swamped, so I just go over and help them. There could be a container coming with some heavy shit. I'll jump on the container and jump in and help them. He didn't like that apparently, but never said it to me. And that was one of the arguments was you're helping your t your other teams when you should be focusing on yours. And I'm like, yeah, but ain't that a good thing? And this guy that was talking to the one that was telling me this, he said, yeah, but they don't see it as that. So if you could just stay here. And he made the point that I had, there's never been a complaint about me. Everyone's always been impressed with what you do. But yet this jumped up dipshit couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle my popularity because I was incredibly popular. I had someone shouting my name across the warehouse every time I'm driving around on this freaking electric um pump truck, the PPT thing, he's freaking shouting my name, booming it everywhere. 
Um, so I said, well, before I left, I said, can I just go back where I went, where I worked before then? And he said, no. And I said, why? And he said, because I want you here. I thought you're an asshole, man. Um, but work was slowing down on the other side, so there wasn't a position available for me for that. But so, yeah, it ain't always that I'm trouble. I just don't part with dipshits, but I am respected by those that actually see the value in people, you know. Um, and likewise, in my last job, they were just people that have not got the background or experience in warehousing, but they've blagged their way in because they've got a military background or they've got a different background in something else. Um it's sad, isn't it? That these people, you've got, I'm the one with all the warehouse experience. I can drive about five different forklifts. I've done it. I've been there, done that. I understand most of the processes. It's like a little bit of training. I can do it. So when I was about 24, I think it was, I was working, there was a job at the docks. So I just rest, uh, left, um, I'd applied from a, like a warehouse dis distribution center for Tesco's. Um, and I was on a forklift for that. And a lot of people jumped ship to this job in the docks. It was a new build, but it was a lot of money. And I was like, no, I'm going to stay where I am. But then I thought, oh, I'll see what this is about. So I applied. They all got their jobs. And then I got offered an opportunity. None of the others had got this opportunity. They said the directors had seen your, your CV, your resume. Um, and they'd like to interview you for a supervisor role. I think I was 24 at the time. And I was like, but I'd rather just go for what I've applied for. Um, and I actually got, and I got the job what I applied for, but... You never know. If I'd got the supervisor role, maybe I'd have had one of these manager roles, you know, back now because I'm working for, I tend to work for morons in all honesty, where I can see, I see so many things and I always tell them, I'm like, this could be improved. I think this, this is an idea. This is an idea. This is an idea. Sometimes they just shake it off and then they'll do it later and then act like they come up with it. Um, or they just, they just get fed up because they don't like, you know, they want to be the inventors and stuff, but their ideas are shit. It's unreal. And I can streamline so much. I always see ideas. Um, but there's another woman I worked for. It was a small company. It was a shitty little warehouse, poorly run. And she, this woman had come from banking or something. So she was from a financial job and she's running a warehouse. She was in charge of the warehouse side. She didn't even understand how, how to, like the bays, how to like, there was no, it was all a mess. I was like, this is crazy. But what, what, what background she got? <laughs> what's that thinking finance? I was like, are you having a laugh? So we've got containers coming in. I'm on the back of this container and she's going with the dream team because like, we're getting it done so quick. And I thought, well, actually, I think I'm doing most of it, whatever. Um, but what made me laugh is there's another time when, the, when this, this container's coming in and we need pallets. And I said, what the fuck's going on? Like, how are we going to do this without pallets then? Where are we going to put all the stuff? And they're like, well, so I don't think she's thought of that. So she had to go around neighbouring warehouses asking if, there's a, if, they set, if, they, if they're prepared to sell any pallets because... They just had no, they had no planning in place for any of this. And you're like, this is a shambles. Like the most fundamental thing in a functioning warehouse is a freaking pallet. You know, don't worry about all the other fancy shit. You've got to get the fundamentals. And yet they were buying buildings nearby to expand. And I thought, you haven't even got the basics right. Eventually, that after I left, I later found the company folded later. I mean, it was no surprise. It was run like a pile of shit. Um yeah, I don't think I haven't worked for that many great people. But what I would say is that job I did leave, the one I said about where that jumped up Pratt, the supervisor on the other side, when I talk about like good leaders, he was in, I liked him. And there was a leader I had when I worked for the job previously. What is I left I left a few times to keep writing my books, but they always had me back. Um, so that, that says a lot, doesn't it? Because I had to train. There was actually a time when I had to train people for stock take Um and I was only there a little while as well, and they trusted me for that. And then the day came to do the stock take, and they needed marshals. They only needed a few, but someone didn't turn up. And they said, get Steve to do it. And I overheard that. I thought, what's what they're talking about? I ain't done none of that. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> and they did. They got me to do it. I had people coming up to me all the time, and I was really helping them out. And there was other people refusing to help people. And I thought, what are you doing? These people need help. So I was like, if they had a question, I would then go and find the team leaders and the managers and all sorts, and I would liaise. So like, if we completed an area... You know, because I'm helping everybody all the time. And I'm like, well, well where do you want them to go next? Because they've all finished that. And they say, if you can get them to go on to the other side over there, um, and that'd be great. So I'm, I'm getting everybody organised. We're doing all that. Even when I was training them, most people would just sit there and chat with their friends and just tell them just to scan, just to count this and that. You know, not bothering. And I'm taking them around the warehouse so they get an idea of all the products. Um, I take I, I take it serious, you know. I, I have a laugh. I'm very chatty. I'm very talkative. So people sometimes like dismiss me. But I know my qualities and I can lead. Um, so I always find it funny when you get team leaders, supervisors and that look down on me when I say things like that. They look at it's like, don't, don't, you know, for well, mate, I could step into your shit. I could easily do what you do. I just need the training and I don't need much training. I'm very smart. 
And they know I am. So a lot of people, when they see a threat, they dismiss you and try and bring you down. Um, but I just don't see myself in warehousing 